Hi, so this week I got back to electric cars, finally, after some digressions into electric bikes, and got to see inside for the first time a second gen Ionic Electric, 38 kilowatt hour. First time I've sat in an Ionic Electric, I think, since I sold my one back in the UK, uh, back in June, so when I moved to, to Denmark. So I've been curious to see what the new one is like. I'm not writing it off, in spite of the known rapid charging problems with the, the changed Ionic Electric. This was a chance uh, at a Hyundai dealer here in Denmark to sit inside one just for a few minutes and get a sense of what it's like, what's changed, what's stayed the same. Hopefully soon I'll be able to move to a test drive. Now I've met the people at the Hyundai dealership, see what, how it compares to the old Ionic Electric. I would, probably won't be able to rapid charge it and so on to get you know, a sense of that side of things, but at least I'll get a you know, sense of how it drives. So let's have a quick look at it all in this video. So this is at the Hyundai dealer and I just sort of dropped in unannounced. I hadn't made any arrangements, so they were very kind to let me have a look. I didn't realize they had a new um, second gen 38 kilowatt hour Ionic Electric there. Apparently it's not yet officially released in Denmark, or so I was told. It was great to have a bit of a look inside it. Uh, it was white, like my old Ionic Electric back in the UK was white, and it was nice to have a look around. So the interior, the main thing that uh, stands out has changed is the kind of sat-nav GPS infotainment system in the middle both the size of it, it's much bigger now. This was an optional uh, additional sized screen, I think 10 and a quarter inch, they said. And it's got this kind of soft touch buttons and things. And you can also have the, the multi-display widgets and things on the sat nav. So you can have things on the side or just the really sort of wide on the cinemascope landscape map view. So the interior of the car, the sort of dashboard and the whole kind of fascia of it felt a bit different actually, a bit more sort of updated, bit sleeker look. In the back, it was very similar, but identical, I would say, actually in the back. The one thing I was trying to look for was whether the air vents were still there. And that's just on the top model, I think, apparently, the air vents in the back. And that's something that, you know, my kids really liked in the old Ionic we had back in the UK, the first gen one, the 28 kilowatt hour usable. Um, the boot was about the same. Again, I don't want to show too much of a sort of private stuff here in the boot. Uh, apart, apart from the fact that there is this extra space now where the kind of there was a sort of void filled in in the old Ionic Electric so you've got a kind of like subwoofer insert space sized uh, extra bit of storage there where you could put some charging cables or something but this is model still had the kind of optional Krell I think it was sound system with a subwoofer so there's still a subwoofer but you've got a bit more storage space. Other than that the doors and things were, were seen very similar the buttons I think were different they seem to be upgraded a bit they looked a bit different from my first gen Ionic Electric um, this one had the kind of like, you know, the metal kick sills as you kind of like get into the car and so on. Charging lights, placement and so on looked exactly the same as my first gen Ionic Electric. Steering wheel looks very similar, if not completely identical. You know, I'm trying to look at it now to see if it's if it's identical. Still got the lane keeping assist, um, blind spot warning. There is a traction control off button. It looks like there's a button for switching off the, the vehicle's sound as well. You know, the simulated sound for at low speed. So hopefully that can be switched off in the Danish version. Otherwise, all kind of very similar. The, the, the dealer did say to me that they've done some programming, I guess, on the traction control to make sure that the wheels, the wheels don't spin as much in the front. That was a bit of a problem on slick roads in the UK. The buttons on the door panel looked a bit different, looked a bit upgraded. The screen itself, the kind of instrument cluster, the binnacle is different, um, almost completely different. There's more sort of dashes on the battery indicator. The whole center thing is, is more sort of digital and uh, flexible and adaptable to the different driving modes now than it was. Um, the power thing on the left looks looks fairly similar and the warning lights have moved around to make space for this bigger kind of higher resolution screen in the middle. Still the paddles for the regen. I hope you can still fully coast in the Ionic Electric. I'll have to wait for a test drive. Then there's these soft buttons and something has been upgraded about the, the air conditioning apparently. The sort of drive buttons there are almost exactly the same. Um, this one had the heated and the ventilated seats, but they're a paid optional extra in Denmark, whereas they come standard on the premium SE trim in the UK. And there was a kind of view button there that I was being told about, which is apparently you can run the reversing camera all the time, even when you're driving. So you can have a kind of digital view of the back. Here, the dealer is showing me the kind of various widgets you can add in to the display. Uh, this thing was the main kind of difference that I saw. All the other control stalks and things were pretty similar. Um, the other thing that was different, which wasn't in my first gen Ionic Electric, that's in the second gen one, and of course this was a paid extra again. And I think below you can see that there's still the contactless charging, you know, the wireless charging for phones and things, was this kind of ambient blue light here. Um, take it or leave it. If it's in the car that you're getting, I guess it's it's fine. 
Um, nice to see it. And this whole thing feels a little bit sleeker there, the dashboard there. The air vents are a bit different. They've got rid of the copper trim around it that was available in the UK models, at least. But other than that, it was very similar. So overall, I, I liked it. It was nice to sit in Ionic again. Um, it felt extremely similar in terms of visibility, driving position. It had electrically adjustable seats. I think this one had the optional memory seats as well. The memory positions, you have two memories. Um, everything was very familiar in the similar places. So this weird kind of like hood over the instrument binnacle with a hole out of the back of it. Not sure how that will work out if you get light at certain angles and so on. Hopefully they've, they've thought of that. And yeah, it was very familiar and very nice. Uh, the car is a bit upgraded. Actually, looking back now at the, at the front of it again, let's go back to that. In photos, I really don't like the front grille on the Ionic Electric. Um, not to say that the first gen one is a pretty car, it's, it's not. But it didn't look so bad, actually, in the flesh. It was a bit more sort of uh, discreet, I think. It looked like any other kind of car in, in the lot of this dealer. The lights did look better. I appreciated the lights. I think they're all full LED now and they've got more kind of driving, you know, um, daylight running lights and things and the fog lights are all LED. And that did look better and the back ones looked pretty nice as well. Other than that, it was, you know, an extremely similar experience getting in. And I guess all the other differences would have to be kind of worked out by a test drive. So hopefully in the next week or so, or the next few weeks, I'll try and get there again and have a test drive of it. So very nice team there. They also had a Kona electric, and I think they had an earlier first gen Kona uh, Ionic electric for sale as well too. So this was a great find. I've been here in Denmark for months, been trying to kind of make contact with dealers and so on. This time I was able to go in face to face and met a very, very helpful person at the Hyundai dealer. What seemed to be the negative things about all of it was the price. So I'm used to in the UK, I bought a second hand first gen Ionic electric back in the UK for I think it was around about 21,000 pounds and it was about a year old maybe a bit over a year old when i bought it and it was top spec it had everything it had the ventilated seats it had heated seats heated seats in the back and all the other kind of trim things aluminium pedals and kick sills and all that kind of stuff you couldn't get any extra things for it it was literally top spec it seems that the way that the pricing is done here in denmark for the kona and for the ionic there's a lot of optional extras, or at least enough to really bump the price up. So I would want the kind of same spec as the one I had in the UK. Obviously they don't have any secondhand, second gen ones because they're not even officially released new as yet in Denmark. They might be out already in other parts of the world. Yeah, there's there's no way of getting a kind of secondhand model. And even the secondhand first gen prices are higher than I paid years ago back in the UK for a, for a secondhand Ionic Electric. So that kind of irks a bit. So it seems that from what uh, the dealer was saying, even though the base price is about uh, 290,000 crowns for the premium model, the trend is to 70,000. They've upgraded the motor, 100 kilowatt motor, up from 80 kilowatt. So about a 20 horsepower bump in power or 20, 30 horsepower bump in power. Um, still quite high torque on it. You won't actually get one for 290,000 if you want the kind of spec that I had on my second hand one back in the UK then you'd be looking at um, adding all kinds of optional things. On the premium, it would be the seats. It would be, you know, the kind of memory function, heated and cooled seats and heated seats in the back, which with kids is a really nice thing to have, particularly in, you know, a climate like Denmark. So the car that I just showed you, the one I just sat in very quickly, would go for about 306,000 Danish crowns. Um, so that's 306,000 Danish crowns is about 35,000 pounds. So that's quite a lot and more than you'd pay in the UK, I think. Uh, they don't have the plug-in car grant here, so there's nothing to drop that price down. The problem is that at 306,000 crowns, 35,000 pounds sterling, you're getting very, very close to the price of a standard Range Plus Tesla Model 3, which is 370,000 crowns or 42,500 pounds. So, you know, that's a lot of money, as is the price of the Ioniac Electric, but you're only talking about, you know, £7,000 difference or something. And uh, for that amount of money, which is still a lot of money, you could buy a car for that in many places of the world, um, even a second-hand electric car, you're getting a lot more usability with a Tesla Model 3 in many ways, both, you know, sort of autopilot, but particularly access to supercharger network. And yeah, I'll come back to that in a moment. I did like the fact, I uh, did a bit of looking afterwards after seeing the Ionic Electric. So the one I sat in didn't have this, but you can apparently get these two-tone leather seats in the Ionic Electric as a paid optional extra, but I quite like them. Uh, the cabin on the Ionic Electric is the only thing that really I didn't like that much. The driving experience was always great, and I love the kind of efficiency focus that Hyundai has with the Ionic, but yeah, the seats and the interior was very drab. My friend Maria, who sat in the car once, my cyclist friend, 
she agreed sort of drab interior not very premium feeling this might give it a bit of a nicer look this two-tone look there is obviously the issue about the rapid charging you can see here this is from uh, hyundai's denmark page you know there's only a three minute difference between charging it to 80 percent on a 100 kilowatt charger versus a lower power 50 kilowatt rapid charger and that's because it doesn't charge very fast bjorn nieland has showed that already and uh, i think you know the, the reality would bear out that you wouldn't get much benefit out of using faster possibly more expensive charges in some places and it could be an issue on longer trips with this so the other interesting thing looking at the hyundai website uh, this is the Dan denmark one but translated into english uh, there is the slightly faster home charging if you've got a home charging unit we probably wouldn't be able to get one here renting now we'd be just plugging in off a trickle charger uh, you can charge a little bit faster 7.2 kilowatt instead of 6.6 .6. there'd be some charging losses but you'd still be charging it faster if you've got the equipment to do that but you also notice here they do have this, the battery heating system uh, too which they did have on the old first gen ionic electric i believe and then the cooling is through pulling the air conditioning air through the the, the back seats I think that might be gone now i'm not sure i didn't get a chance to look for that because the car was in the dark almost uh, i'll try and look at that if i go for a test drive i'll try and see if the vents are still there under the rear seats the main thing you can see from here on the battery if i kind of zoom in on this on the web page i did wonder how they'd made the 28 kilowatt hour usable battery into a 38 kilowatt hour again i presume usable maybe not because they're saying 38.3 they're being pre very precise so perhaps the usable is a bit lower than that maybe 35 36. you can see that they've kind of expanded it um, through the transmission tunnel and a bit under the front seats I think they don't show you exactly where in the car this battery goes but looking at the fact that it used to go under the boot and under the rear seats if you can imagine the same battery without the little sort of t-shaped prong on the front on this blue one as you see here maybe I can find an old uh, graphic to, to, to sort of put to compare the two of them here it does seem to be they've just expanded it they've got extra capacity by maybe better density but also they've made the battery pack volume bigger they've expanded it into other parts of the car and maybe that's the maximum they can fill up with current energy densities the last thing about it is that it also now the ionic like the kona electric gains this and i think the kia e nero maybe the kia e soul gains the utility mode function so you can actually leave the heating running with the engine off so you don't have to do anything silly to kind of uh, have heating when the car's off so if you want to sleep in it i haven't slept in the car for many decades but yeah if you want to or you want to just leave it running for any particular reason you can do that without draining the 12 volt battery um, another thing near the Hyundai dealer another sort of nice find just literally right outside where the, you just saw that parked second gen uh, Ionic electric 38 kilowatt hour there's a Jaguar dealer that has the iPACE as well so that'll be something else I'll go and try in and test drive if I can very curious about that I filmed one at Oslo airport quite some months ago just had a quick look at it but not had a chance to test drive it so that'll be great it's so good to time to get around to some dealers and have a look at the electric cars that they've got and now the reason why I've been able to do this is that my parents are visiting for a few days from the UK their first time in Denmark and their first time visiting us since I moved here five and a bit months ago and they've got a rental car with them so that's wonderful because we're actually able to get around and do things um, that I haven't been able to do for ages because yeah sort of catching up on things uh, long-time viewers will notice that the boxes are gone they've gone to the charity shop again that's thanks to my parents being here and all their help one thing we noticed um, I took the bus out to meet them at the airport uh, so that they didn't have to drive back in the dark on their own and good lord look at these Danish roads so I think someone had mentioned to me that Danish motorways and roads don't have the cat size that are very common in the UK and they have a very specific color lighting logic or reflecting logic in the UK to indicate central reservation hard shoulder and then junctions we're merging is is on I'll try and put some pictures on to show that and um, some motorways are lit in the UK they switch the lights off often now to save kind of money save environmental uh, you know things Danish roads are extremely dark at night I'm filming some here just in the city to just show that the the paint is a is a not the same kind of paint I guess they use in the UK it doesn't reflect the light of the headlights anything as much so and it was a rainy night when my parents arrived on the roads you just couldn't see the lanes at all so that was quite a surprise for me because I was thinking okay if we do get an electric car here if we take that huge cost on board uh, we can just drive 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 I wouldn't want to be driving much at night in winter the, the roads are very very poorly marked and uh, visibility is terrible I mean really terrible I'm quite surprised how people haven't noted that before I did say it to someone at my, at my son's kindergarten and they agreed they don't like driving at night either so you know the lack of uh, cat size or markings of the various parts of the road yeah not great I don't know if it's just Denmark or other European countries but that was a real shock the other nice thing about my parents being here I took them to a Tesla store for the first time so my parents are not 
that into electric cars. I've had one for a few years now, but they've been a bit sort of, you know, they're not too bothered by it. And they definitely had never seen Teslas in spite of the fact of I was trying to get them to, to have a look at them or show them in some way. So we were going right past it. So we stopped and had a look. Lovely Tesla Model 3 in red here. And, uh, and yeah, so we went to the store for the first time and they had a proper look around and uh, in them and particularly at the Model 3, because even though it's still stupefyingly expensive, it's the one that, you know, if we could possibly get one, maybe on a long-term loan or something, it will be the one we'd go for. And I was quite surprised. I thought they'd be a bit skeptical, particularly because my dad didn't seem too keen on the big screens and just the single screen design of the Model 3. I think they ended up quite liking it, which was, you know, nice. I'm not really here to kind of, you know, advocate for the brand or to make them like it if they don't like it. Whatever opinions they've got about it is absolutely fine by me. But they liked it. They liked the space. They liked the design. Uh, my mum particularly liked the big glass roof and the feeling of openness that that gave. But they had to sit in the other models as well, the Tesla Model X and the Tesla Model um, S. Obviously, the, the one thing about Tesla showrooms is you can't fiddle with the doors on the Model X. So that's a bit of a downer because obviously that's the kind of party trick of the Model X in particular. They're ridiculously expensive cars, mine, so that's not a big issue because we're not in the market for Model X and probably never will be in our entire lives. But still, it would have been fun to show it. But they did actually, someone closed it up, well, one of the uh, employees closed it up to show someone from a distance. So they did kind of get to see it a little bit, so that was quite nice. And they were very impressed by the kind of the boot space and the front, the front trunk or sort of front boot space in it as well, which was great. And I was kind of explaining that's because there's the electric motors and the no need for the engine block. Of course, in the Ionic Electric, you've still got something that looks like an engine block, so you don't have front storage space, but that's another story. But it was quite interesting to do it back to back because of this kind of price issue of, you know, the um, only being about a £7,000 difference or about sort of 64,000 crowns difference in Danish currency between the entry level Model 3 and this kind of top spec second gen Ionic Electric 38 kilowatt hour. It was nice for my parents to see that as well. They really were of the impression that you get a lot more car for the money for going for the Model 3. So, but it was really nice actually to have, you know, a sort of second opinion with me, with my parents visiting. And they didn't mind actually. I think the kind of uh, the modern design of the Model 3 and the various kind of quirks of it. And they seemed to just have a lot of fun looking around it. So that was nice. It was nice to sort of share that with them. And I had a bit of a sit in with them too, and a bit of a look and a bit of a play. And actually we did the thing of, uh, we have done this for fun in the Ionic Electric back in the UK with my daughter, just, you know, navigate to sort of imaginary places as it were, you know, so let's see what it would take to go to Italy or whatever in, in the sat nav GPS in the car. So we actually navigated back to, to Wales, where my parents live in the UK to see, you know, would a route come up in the car? And of course, with the supercharger network and the way that the, um, you know, the, the route planning works in the Tesla Model 3, in about 30 or 45 seconds, it had worked it out. We could actually drive back to the UK in it. So we could go and see the family and go and see them. It would be very feasible. And that's, that's a big consideration with this very small price difference here in Denmark between the two cars. That's a big consideration. That's, that's really something to take into account that it opens up that functionality. Whereas with the Ionic Electric, firstly, you've got the possible slower rapid charging issue and it never is going to get close to the charging speeds of a Model 3 anyway, even the first gen Ionic Electric. Yeah, and you, the route planning you'd have to do to do that. I've heard great comments from viewers that they've done these kind of long trips in the first gen Ionic Electric. So it is possible and people do it, but it would be a whole different kind of planning thing from you know, how easy it would be to be do it in the Model 3. So we'll have to see. One last thing on the Model 3 then, before I just do a quick update on other things. Um, we looked at the hinge on the kind of the, the boot lid and God, that's a strange bit of engineering. I always kind of realized it was a weird boot, not a kind of normal boot on the Model 3, but that's a weird hinge. I mean, you know, in a, in a week of Tesla weirdness, not the weirdest thing that uh, I've seen from Tesla, but still, I hadn't noticed that before when fiddling with the Model 3, so I thought I'd just film a bit of that. So that's my kind of wrap up on electric cars. I was I, I liked the Ionic Electric second gen. It was nice to sit in it. I'm hoping to get a test drive soon. So there'll be far more kind of depth and substance to my opinions about it. Uh, the price is a real turn off, I must say. Um, maybe it's something that eventually when they work through second hand, but you know, given that there's almost, you know, they're not available new yet, apart from to kind of pre-order. Yeah, I don't know. I can't see the price kind of point coming down very soon. And it's just too close to a Model 3 really for comfort. So yeah, but We'll see. We'll see why I feel when I drive one. I hope to drive a Kona Electric too. That might be another option for us. We'll see. Other than that, I've been really enjoying getting around on my electric cargo bike that I mentioned I'd bought last week. I'm quite proud that I've just worked out how to adjust the disc brakes to stop them kind of scraping if there's any kind of like uh, misalignment getting in. It's very nice that up on the, it sits up on a stand and you can adjust particularly the front one. 
and yeah, I did clean the bike after this. This was a particularly rainy, muddy kind of run to the kindergarten with my son. But I've been just impressed by the whole kind of aluminium frame and how it's designed and how it's engineered. I've been looking at the kind of steering vein, you know, the way that the rod goes through to control the steering. And it just has this really nicely engineered, robust feeling about it. I must say last week when I actually put the footage of my old Ionic Electric next to the cargo bike, I felt like oh, a kind of like drop in my stomach. It felt so mad to be saying, you know, replacing one thing with the other. When I looked at the car with all its storage space and it keeps you warm and you can stick the whole family in it and go almost anywhere in the UK. And then this kind of little puny, very kind of minimalist looking bike. So I'm still sticking with it. It's still a very nice way to commute around. But uh, yeah, that really kind of gave me a, oh, kind of like a hit in the stomach looking at the two things compared next to each other. Yeah, a bike is quite clearly not a car. You know, an electric bike is not an electric car, but still it has its purposes and I'm I'm actually really enjoying particularly riding along the protected cycle lanes and so on by the lakes. It's great fun. It's, it's very relaxing, very enjoyable. And I'm just trying to learn to slow down a bit and kind of enjoy it rather than trying to get as fast as possible everywhere and hitting the speed limit on the electric assist motor all the time because that just wears you out. And yeah, just like as I say, my parents are here. They've been helping out. They're here for a few more days. And it's not the best time to visit Denmark or any kind of very northern European country. At least it hasn't been raining all the time, but it's been quite grey and cold and dark and windy. But still, we went down to the beach. Um, Aarhus is a kind of seaside town, I guess. Uh, it's on the coast. And we just had a bit of a look around. There's some fairly fierce wind you see here with my daughter and that looking, at the, looking out over the waves crashing in. And uh, yeah, but it's been quite nice. It's nice to spend time with family and just to see a bit of the scenery at different times of the year. It can't always be kind of, you know, 25, 30 degrees, blue skies, uh, light until sort of 11 or 12 at night. And uh, yeah, that's just the way it goes, living in a country with seasons like this. And yeah, but it's nice to have them here. So I was trying to make the most of it anyway, a bit of a comedy shot of me here on a, on a hammock in this freezing cold forest, which in the summer must look glorious, but now looks a little bit barren, I must say. Yeah, and that's about it. So that's my kind of wrap up for this week. Yeah, that's what we've been up to. So hopefully more sort of car stuff coming. Now I'm starting to make some contacts and looking into things. I hope to do a test drive of the standard range plus Model 3. I really want to do a test drive in this second gen Ionic Electric and the dealer there seems really nice. So I hope that's going to come off. Hopefully a Kona Electric 2. Then I'll start maybe looking into the kind of some of the Kia stuff. And maybe I'll go and look at sort of, you know, Volkswagen and see what they're, uh, you know, enabling in, in the area to do with the ID models and things like that. I don't know whether they've got any models coming in for test drives yet probably too early um, and maybe track down Renault as well to see if I can get something with the ZE50 Zoe to just get a, a proper sense of testing them all over the winter and then come the new year when we know a bit more about you know our kind of longer term situation here we can think about what to do in the meantime I've got the bike to have some fun I'll try and get a review up of the two different bikes we've got the electric bikes and yeah so there'll be lots more coming please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me and bye for now